placenta previa. Previa means going before. In this sense, placenta goes to the birth canal before the fetal presenting part. The placenta previa is defined as the presence of placental tissue over or adjacent to the internal cervical os. Traditionally, four variations of placenta previa were recognized. It is complete, partial, marginal, and low lying. So let us see their difference. When we say complete previa, <clears throat> when the internal cervical os is completely or totally covered by the placental tissue. When we say partial, the internal cervical os is partly covered by the placental tissue. The marginal is when the placental edge lies within two centimeters of the internal cervical os, we call it as marginal placenta. The low lying is the placental edge lies within two to three centimeters of the internal cervical os, and also apparent second trimester placenta previa were also called low lying placenta. So, with improved ultrasound technology and data precisions, results in a more appropriate determination of the placental location in relation to the internal cervical os. This results in a revised classification of the placenta previa that consists of two variations. The true placenta previa, when we say true placenta previa, placenta totally or partially cover the internal cervical os, we call it as the true placenta previa. It is a previous complete and partial is called the true placenta. When we say the low lying, according to the recent revised classification, when the placental edge lies within two centimeters of the internal cervical os, we call it as the low lying placenta. The low lying placenta, even though it is not the true placenta previa, it is not as it is associated with an increased risk of vaginal bleeding and adverse pregnancy outcome with the low-lying placenta. So, let us see the incidence. The incidence of placenta previa is estimated to be 1 in 200 deliveries at term, and in the second trimester, placenta previa may occur in up to 6% of the pregnancies. If you see the difference, it is lower at term, but higher in the second trimester. What causes this discrepancy? It is because of the placental migration. So, there are three theories explain how the placental migration occurs. One is with the development of the lower trine segment, the stationary lower edge of the placenta relocate away from the cervical os. As you know, the lower trine segment is estimated to be 0.5 centimeters at 20 weeks of gestation and reaches 5 centimeters at term. And the second theory is trophotropism. Unidirectional growth of the placental, I mean trophoblastic tissue towards the fundus because of improved blood flow at the fundus, this results in resolution of the placenta previa. The third theory is the, the part of the uterus covered by the placenta grow faster than the rest of the uterus. This is the third explanation how placental migration occurred. So this discrepancy is because of these three theories. Okay. So, studies found that the higher association of placenta previa with fetal malpresentations because the placenta occupies the lower segment, so the fetal descent will be inhibited, so increased risk of fetal malpresentation. There is also high rate of intrauterine growth restriction since the placenta is implanted in the lower segment where poor blood supply to the fetus is at risk of growth restriction. There is also high rate of preterm labor, premature rupture of membrane, congenital anomalies, and amniotic fluid embolisms were found to be higher in a woman having placenta previa. So, the exact reason why, the exact etiology why the woman had placenta previa is not known, but there are several risk factors that predispose a woman for placenta previa. So, these risk factors are Look, the increasing increased parity. With increased parity, the risk of placenta previa increased. It was it was said that in grand multiparous women, the rate of placenta previa is estimated to be around five percent. 
in nali parasuman it is estimated to be 0 0.2 percent and uh, around 80 percent of the placenta previa occurred in multiparous women with increasing maternal age the rate of placenta previa also increased studies found that women older than 35 years of age had four times higher than higher risk of placenta previa than uh, less than 35 and when it reached above 40 the risk increased nine times okay maternal races other risk factors it is higher in asian women than the white and the white has higher uh, risk of placenta prevent than the black woman so the extrinsic maternal factors cigarette smoking compared with the non-smokers a pregnant woman who smoked cigarette had three times higher rate of placenta previa than non-smoker cocaine abuse fourfold increased risk of placenta previa residents at higher elevations has high rate of placenta previa since there is a low oxygen tensions at high altitude and the above two the cocaine and cigarette smoking cause utroplacental hypoxia that results in compensatory placental hypertrophy and increased placental surface area this conditions predispose for placenta previa the other risk factor is infertility treatment a woman who conceived from assisted reproductive technology has high rate of placenta previa since most women who received infertility treatment are older and uh, multifetal gestation is as a complications it's because of this there is a high rate of placenta previa with infertility treatment so let us see the fatal factors multifetal gestation is a high rate of placenta previa even though there are controversies some studies found that there is no associations the male fetus uh, the, the exact reason why a pregnant woman having male fetus had high rate of placenta previa is not known but there are two theories one is a larger placenta associated with the male fetus and delayed implantation of the male blastocyst in the lower uterine in the lower uterine segment predispose for placenta previa the other is uterine leomyoma will increase the risk of placenta previa prior placenta previa a woman having previous pregnancies complicated by placenta previa eightfold increase risk of recurrent placenta previa the others are prior uterine surgeries like prior uterine curettage myomectomy scar and the cesarean scar were strong risk factors that predispose a woman for placenta previa the strongest is said to be the prior cesarean deliveries the, the risk of placenta previa increased linearly with increasing number of cesarean section. Studies found that a woman having one prior cesarean deliveries, the risk of placenta previa is estimated to be 0.9%. Two prior cesarean deliveries, the risk reaches 1.7%. If the three or more uh, previous uh, cesarean deliveries, the risk reaches 3%. And uh, for those having four, prior four or more cesarean scars the risk reaches up to 10 percent okay so let us see the clinical manifestations the most common clinical manifestations of placenta previa is painless vaginal bleeding in around 70 to 80 percent of the pregnant women complicated by previa presented with painless vaginal bleeding so in addition to painless the bleeding is characterized as a bright red causeless and recurrent the initial bleeding comes without warning and uh, it is rarely to be perfused it ceases to recur and the recurrent is more perfused than the initial episode of the bleeding so of those women who had vaginal bleeding one third occurred before 30 weeks one third 30 36 weeks and one third after 36 weeks those having bleeding before 36 weeks as uh, an increased risk of transfusions and adverse perinatal outcome the bleeding is believed to be due to the disruptions of the placental vessels associated with the development of the lower uterine segment in the dilatation of the cervix so with this with these two conditions the development of lower uterine segment and dilatation of the cervix will result in a spontaneous placental separations so another mechanism of bleeding is said to be uh, digital examinations which causes the separations and even the sexual intercourse the strenuous exercise may result in placental separation causing the bleeding 
So the other symptoms are the uterine contractions before the bleeding in 10 to 20% of the cases. In this case, clinically seems abrupt. Asymptomatic, asymptomatic until term in 10% of the women. Coagulation defects are rare in uh, a woman having placenta previa because of uh, two reasons. One is most of the bleeding are revealed one and uh, the lower uterine segment has no larger veins uh, draining this uh, thrombin to the systemic circulation. There is a high rate of bleeding after placental delivery. The morbidly adherent placenta is also frequent complications. Whenever there is a uterine bleeding after a, after a mid-pregnancy, placenta previa must always be considered and it should be ruled out by ultrasound before digital examination. If there is no ultrasound, it should be by double setup examination, it says, but since ultrasound is widely available, this examination is most of the time nowadays are not performed. The timing of the diagnosis is changed in the past four decades. Previously, placenta previa is diagnosed when the woman comes with bleeding, but nowadays, most women with placenta previa is diagnosed uh, asymptomatically by uh, ultrasound during antenatal care follow up. Ultrasound is the best means for the diagnosis. The transabdominal and transvaginal ultrasound are the common modalities. So if you see transabdominal ultrasound, it detects 95% of placenta previa. But here in this case, the false positive cause of placenta previa should be identified. These causes are three. One is full bladder, which artificially elongates the cervix and compresses the lower segment, mimicking the placenta previa. The, the second is the contraction of the lower uterine segment most commonly occurs after you impeding the bladder and the third is clotted blood. Transvaginal ultrasound has a diagnostic accuracy of almost 100%. It should be performed after transabdominal ultrasound is uncertain uh, and uh, transvaginal ultrasound is said to be safe and a good quality of image can be obtained without the probe contracting the cervix. Yeah, around two to three centimeters away the cervix, good quality of image can be obtained. If you see this figure, here is the placenta, so the cervix is here almost totally covered. Okay. If placenta previous diagnosed in the second trimester, repeat sonography should be obtained at 32 weeks of gestation. And if still persists at 32 weeks, repeat at 36 weeks. And if placenta previa persists at 36 weeks, there is no chance, almost no chance of resolution of the placenta previa. 90% of placenta previa diagnosed in the second trimester resolved by term. There are a potential factors that determine the resolution. One is the timing of diagnosis. The earlier the diagnosis of the placenta previa, the more likely the resolution of placenta, the more likely the resolution. Extent over the cervical loss. Complete has low chance of resolution than the low lying. Placenta location. Anterior placenta previa has low chance to resolve than the posterior. Previous uterine caesarean scar decreases the chance of resolution. Occasionally, MRI may be used to diagnose placenta previa, particularly for identification of posterior placenta previa and assessment of invasive placentation. So let us see the management. The management of a woman with placenta previa depends on the clinical presentations, maternal and fetal conditions, and gestational age at the time of diagnosis. So let us see a woman who came asymptomatic placenta previa. Asymptomatic placenta previa diagnosed at term is an indication for delivery. So, if it is diagnosed before term, they should be managed expectantly as an either an inpatient or outpatient. Several studies showed that they showed the safety and the efficacy of outpatient management of asymptomatic women with placenta previa. Who are the candidates for this asymptomatic, uh, for this outpatient management? One, a woman must be compliant. The second, a woman should live within 20 minutes away from the hospital, must have 24 hours emergency transportation to the hospital, and the woman must verbalize a thorough understanding of a risk associated with the placenta previa and outpatient management. It is not possible to predict all cases of bleeding in a woman with placenta previa, even though there are some ultrasound features that predict 
the chance of bleeding. These ultrasound features are, if it, if, if it is complete, the chance of bleeding is high. Thick placental edge, the chance of bleeding is high. And if the cervical length is, if the cervical length is less than three centimeters, the chance of bleeding is also high. And eco-free uh, space between the placenta and the cervical is also determines the chance of bleeding. Caesarean section should be done between 36 to 37 weeks of gestation. General principles of expectant management, serial ultrasound to assess the placenta location in the fetal growth. The woman should be avoidance of cervical examination in the intercourse, activity restriction, administration of antenatal corticosteroid to facilitate fetal lung maturation, gestational age less than 34 weeks, dietary and iron supplementation to avoid maternal anemia, early medical attention if any vaginal bleeding occurs. So if the woman comes with bleeding, what can we do? So let us see. The first thing, we need to admit the woman to deliver in the delivery unit. Immediate hemodynamic surveillance of the woman must be undertaken. Then we need to resuscitate the woman with crystalloid baseline laboratory investigations like hematocrit, blood group RH. Blood product should be prepared. If she is RH negative, RH immunoglobulin should be determined and should be given. And after stabilization, decision on expectant management versus immediate delivery should be made. So. These are the indications for immediate delivery. If gestational age is 37 weeks, placenta previa with bleeding is an indication for delivery. If there is a life-threatening maternal hemorrhage, it is also an indication. Non-reassuring fetal status, IUFD, severe congenital anomaly incompatible with life in the presence of placenta previa, it is an indication for immediate delivery. So, in the absence of the above indication for the immediate delivery, let us say gestational age is earlier and uh, no indication for immediate delivery, we can manage expectantly, but in this case, most experts recommend almost as an inpatient, okay? Maternal and the fetal condition should be assessed during expectant management. The woman must have an IV cannula and resuscitation equipment around the bedside. cross match blood must be prepared, and the woman should be advised about the uh, reporting the danger signs like uterine contraction, vaginal bleeding, decreased fetal movement. And the 50% of the women who has managed expectantly with blood, bleeding placenta previa can continue the pregnancy more than four weeks. So the delivery should have been between 36 to 37 weeks of gestation. When we see the mode of delivery, caesarean delivery is indicated in almost all sono pregnant women with sonographic evidence of placenta previa. So, for the surgeon, before doing the caesarean scar, uh, incisions, so the blood product should have been prepared and readily available since there is high risk of bleeding with the placenta previa at the time of caesarean section. And before incision, the surgeon should assess the vascularity of the lower uterine segments. So even though the lower segment incisions are not contraindicated, so if the lower segment is highly vascular and especially in the anterior placenta previa, vertical incisions is preferable. Ideally, placenta should not be disrupted when entering the uterus. If it is disrupted, expedious delivery of the fetus is recommended because of an increased risk of fetal bleeding. So, placenta should be delivered spontaneously by controlled cord traction since there is a high rate of uh, concomitant morbidly adherent placenta, we need to take care here, okay? If it is not separated easily, we need to consider morbidly adherent and prepare the management for that. Once the placenta is separated and delivered, there is high chance of bleeding from the placental implantation site. Since there is a low myometrial fibers in the site of placental attachment in the lower uterine segment, which is very important to control the bleeding by contraction, their absence will result in bleeding. So how, the, how did we control? Aggressive uterotonic agents should have been given. Overseeing the placental implantation site is very important and the balloon tamponade should have been recommended. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to, sub to subscribe my channel to have more videos and see you on the comment.